One of the most common questions that I'm asked is lifestyle changes, smoking, other life, exercise, and most of all, the what kind of diet should I eat? And I think we are fortunate to have Julie Maris here, who is professor of ophthalmology, uh, and also probably nationally and internationally recognized researcher on nutrition. So we are really very fortunate. And she always is a very popular speaker. So Julie, nutrition and macular degeneration. Good morning. I'm delighted to be here and share what I've learned over about 25 years of research in the role of foods and supplements and age-related eye disease, uh, what we've learned about what you can do for yourself to lower your risk for uh, progressing vision loss, uh, and if you don't have macular degeneration, how you might prevent it. Now, I've been given only 15 minutes, and nutrition is a big topic. I'm going to hit the highlights, what's new this year. Um, and I wanted to point out that at the Department of Ophthalmology booth, there are detailed handouts that give you a lot of more specific information. And also, there's information on um, our website, which I've indicated here, but is also on the handout. The good news is that the list of things that we can do for ourselves to slow the progression or prevent AMD is much longer often than the things that we can't control, like our genes or what stage of macular degeneration we happen to have at some point. Now, you already have heard so much this morning about the importance of getting good medical treatment and all of the revolutions in medical treatment that are available now. We all know it's important to avoid excessive sunlight, wear sunglasses, not smoke. I'm going to focus on the other things, eating well, being active, and considering some supplements. Now, I'm speaking on the behalf of a large team of people, um, not only um, our research team, which you can partially see on this slide. Can you align this better, please? And um, so <laughs> you see some of our research team here. Um, and, uh, some, and many of them are here. Uh, but also, we work with a team of collaborators, including um, Dr. Blody, who's left off of this slide, who leads a team of investigators throughout the country in our research, as well as a large team of vision scientists, and scientists in epidemiology, genetics, and nutrition. And I'd also like to say that this research is made possible by the generosity of all of you, if you're taxpayers, because we get much of our funds from the National Institutes of Health. Thank you. Couldn't do it without that. And many foundations that you contribute to. And also, uh, this is the information I present is made possible by the generosity of people who spend their time to participate in our studies. So thank you. Nutrition matters. There, are no, there is now a lot of scientific data that gives us evidence that nutrition matters. These data come from clinical trials, like the ARID study that you've uh, heard some about this morning, and also clinical trials of, in other disciplines that tell us how diet and lifestyles can influence our risk for inflammation, oxidative stress, high blood lipids, and, and high blood pressure, which we know promote conditions like AMD. Also, some of our information comes from population studies, like what we conduct, which is able to provide information about the potential effects of various diets over longer periods of time than can be tested um, in clinical trials and in a greater variety of people. And they can pick up clues about some of the aspects of nutrition that may not yet be studied in clinical trials. 
The data suggests that nutrition can matter a lot. In studies that we've published in the last three years, we've reported that women who had healthy diets had a two-fold lower chance of having early stages of AMD. And women who were physically active, had healthy diets and didn't smoke, the chances of having early signs were three-fold lower. It could matter a lot. What's new this year, um, to come out this year, it hasn't yet been published, is that healthy diets and lifestyles can also lower the risk associated with having high-risk genotypes. So let me talk about what's new. You've already heard a little bit about that. Um, consider how your eyes might be like a bunch of kale or the trees that you see outside. And to help you think about that, now when you're outside, you see in some of the trees, the chlorophyll is draining out, and what remains in many trees is this yellow color, lutein. If you boil kale, you look in the water, the water is yellow. That's lutein too, uh, what they've now added to the arids to supplement. And that's lutein and zeaxanthin. So plants accumulate, they especially concentrate this to help modulate light energy and, and reduce the uh, negative effects of too much light. And similarly, we accumulate this in our eyes. Although plants can make it, we can't, so we need to eat it. So if we eat enough lutein, um, our eyes can look like this. You can see the yellow pigment that accumulates. Um, and this is an area of the macula from the back of the eye, um, the area of the eye where we see uh, most detailed vision, that we used to see most detailed vision. You can see the yellow pigment that accumulates. And you can see that if you take a photograph under a blue light, you no longer see this pigment. And that's because lutein absorbs blue light, which can otherwise be damaging to a retina. Now, the amount of pigment that we have in our eyes is tremendously variable, whether you're, you study it biochemically or whether you use um, non-invasive flicker tests to measure the level of this pigment like we do. Um, depending on the amount of macular pigment you have, it could absorb between 40 and 90 percent of the visible light that reaches the retina. You only need a small amount to sense vision, but there's a lot of extra um, light that it, it takes care of. And this pigment can be beneficial in, otherwise, in, a, in other ways. In addition to absorbing blue light, um, it's an antioxidant like vitamin C and vitamin E, so it can quench free radicals and it can also lower inflammation. So for these reasons, we think that um, diets um, that are high in this, in fact, not only do we think, but there is evidence that um, people whose diets are rich in leafy greens have a lower chance of getting or having a late macular degeneration. In addition, what's been especially exciting over the last couple of years is new research that shows it helps us see better whether we're young, whether we have macular degeneration. There have been numerous studies now that show we see better if our eyes have more of this pigment or if we've been given supplements to increase this pigment. We can see contrasts better. We can recover from bright lights, as, you, as might happen when you're driving um, and in the night and see headlights coming on. It helps us see better in glare condition. And another interesting area of research that's just emerging is that people who have higher levels of this pigment in their eye can process visual information more quickly. Why is this? It's not just in our macula. Lutein is also especially concentrated in our brain and in the sections of the brain that help process visual information. So perhaps it improves the health of these areas. So you've heard already this morning about the ARIDS-2 um, study, which um, demonstrated that lutein and zeaxanthin was a suitable and preferable alternative to beta-carotene, um, lowering the risk when it replaced beta-carotene, and in people whose diets were low in lutein, 
um, it lowered progression by about 30 percent. And so talk with your daughter about a doctor. Your, <laughs> I get a lot of my advice there. But no, talk with your doc doctor about whether this supplement or alternatives uh, might be best for you. In this study, as Dr. Bode mentioned, omega-3 supplements did not slow progression. Now, this is um, the machine that we used to measure macular pigment over 10 years ago, um, and it's simple, and it's non-invasive, and indeed, some optometrists and some ophthalmologists have machines like this in their office. They're becoming increasingly popular. So we use this information, or the uh, device, to measure the level of macular pigment easily. It's told us that we all vary quite a bit in the amount of macular pigment we have, and it's given us clues about how we might enhance macular pigment. One is eat those dark leafy greens, the richest source of macular pigment. Also, we found that people who have diets that are rich in fruits and vegetables, even after adjusting for lutein, have more macular pigment. Studies have shown that people who eat eggs particularly increase the lutein in their blood and in their retina readily, even though eggs have smaller amounts of lutein, we think it might be a more bioavailable source, more easily absorbed and taken up by the eye. Uh, it could be because of the fat in the eggs. In fact, other studies have shown that fat can be important for lutein and zeaxanthin absorption. Studies have given people uh, salads with a fat-free dressing or with avocados or some oils and found that those that have oils added to the or, or other avocados added to the dressing uh, do more readily increase the levels of lutein in their blood. Our research is also finding that people who have higher intake of omega-3 fats, uh, people who have genes that raise blood levels for omega-3 fats, and others have shown that people who have higher blood levels of omega-3s have more dense macular pigment. We're not exactly sure why that is, but it might be that eating fish or omega-3 fats might enhance the ability to absorb it too. Now, of course, you can get them in supplements. Uh, we know less about supplements. We don't know about the right amount. We don't know who needs more, who needs less. And as we're researching this, um, if you do take supplements, limit it to the amount in the uh, ARIDS2 um, supplement. Uh, that's 12 milligrams, uh, pretty close to the 10 milligrams that you can get from eating up a large um, leafy green diet. Um, but I would avoid taking too much like more than 20 um, milligrams, because we don't know about the safety. And beta carotene, which Dr. Blody said um, before increases the risk for breast cancer, is very similar in structure. So I wouldn't, some is good, more isn't necessarily better. We do have clues that some other characteristics of people are associated with having uh, lower macular pigment. People who have diabetes have lower levels of macular pigment at all levels of dietary intake. We're still trying to understand why. We think it's something to do with um, how it influences um, metabolism. Same for people that have higher abdominal fat or have certain genes. So that is research we're still doing. Seafood, recall that omega-3 added to the ARDS2 uh, supplement over the five years tested did not slow progression of AMD. But there are many population studies that show that people who eat fish have lower advanced AMD. It may not just be the omega-3s. It might be some of the other things in fish that might be helpful together, um, such as vitamin D. There are now four studies, two of which we've done, that suggest having better vitamin C D status is associated with lower risk for macular degeneration. Vitamin B12 has been suggested in two studies to possibly be related to lower risk for macular degeneration, and we know that selenium and zinc are particularly important for eye health as well. So eating seafood twice a week could be helpful to minimize the exposure to contaminants that sometimes come in fish. Eat a variety of types of fish. Change up what you, what you eat, different regions um, and uh, different types of fish. 
physical activity. As nutritionists, we've ignored this for a long time. But some nutrients come to us through more than foods. And one is physical activity. As we breathe, oxygen, a critical nutrient, um, is taken in through our lungs and goes to our eye. Our eyes need oxygen. There's a lot of metabolism that uses oxygen in the back of our eye. Uh, and several studies suggest that people who get physical activity are less likely to have a uh, risk for AMD. Now, if you're outside, you can also get, for free, vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin. Your skin makes vitamin D um, on exposure to ultraviolet light, except about now, for about six months. <laughs> so now the sun is low in the horizon, and there's not as much UV light um, coming to our bodies. And uh, so we need to get it from other sources for about six months unless you go somewhere uh, below a line from like um, Los Angeles to Washington, D.C. And I'll tell you about some other sources in a minute. Um, but also, sunshine provides a trigger to retinal cells, which is helpful to help us maintain good biorhythms, our circadian rhythms. And this helps us get a good night's sleep. Getting a good night's sleep is associated with lower oxidative stress. Maybe it'll help. And a really exciting area of research right now are the other things that sun exposure do. The, it makes chemicals in our skin which influence our metabolism, interestingly. So there's a lot of good stuff in sunlight. Better to get your nutrition from the sun uh, in some ways um, than from a vitamin. And Aldo Leopold does, rem does remind us that a walk in nature never fails to deliver more than we expect. As has been mentioned, there is no evidence that supplements will lower our chances of getting macular degeneration. If you've got a parent who has macular degeneration, you're wondering how to lower the risk. Not even multivitamins. Just this month, another study was published showing that multivitamin use for 11 years and 15,000 physicians did not lower their chances of getting AMD. Uh, there was no significant harm in that study. Now, some of us may not eat as well as the physicians in that study. So in some cases, a multivitamin sometimes could be important to getting some of the nutrients that you may not get enough of, such as perhaps vitamin D. And as I alluded to earlier, uh, some work that we're going to publish uh, this year indicates that healthy diets and lifestyles were associated with a lower estimated risk for AMD in people who had two high-risk variants in the CFH gene, suggesting that healthy diets might lower the genetic risk for AMD. And we're talking about healthy diets, um, physical activity, and not smoking. Supplements which might help, um, whether you have AMD or a family history that we haven't studied as much, vitamin D, especially in the winter if you're not eating food sources. Food sources would be fish, egg yolks, milks, many soy milks are also supplemented with uh, vitamin D. Or you can take supplements between 600 and about 2,000 IUs. Vitamin B12 might be important too, increasing studies are shown. Um, it's part of a supplement which lowered the risk for macular degeneration in one small clinical trial. And we're learning that it's important to get enough B12 if we don't eat animal foods, if you eat a ve vegan diet without milk, eggs, fish, poultry, or dairy. Plus, about 10 to 30 percent of us, over 50, cannot absorb food vitamin D, B12, very much because of the um, acid imbalance in our stomach which um, makes it difficult to break B12 away from the food matrix. So some physicians are testing our B12 levels, and if it's low, you can take supplements. Avoid excess. High-dose supplements, like is present in ARIDS too, are medicines. They're not foods. They may pose benefit, but, or they may pose risk to some people more than others. We don't know. 
I think in a couple years we're going to probably know a little more about um, who supplements might benefit and not. And there is a considerable body of scientific evidence of potential harm for many individual ingredients and in supplements. So again, some is good, more isn't necessarily better. Discuss with your uh, physician your decision to supplement what you're taking, and as new research comes out, you'll be able to be notified about um, some more specific information on who might do better on certain types of supplements. A lot of people ask about herbal supplements because uh, folk tradition suggests that bilberry, wolfberry, astaxanthin uh, might improve vision. And there is not sufficient data to prove this or disprove it. But my concern is that the amount of herbals that are put in supplements is not regulated. Safety is untested. There is a growing concern that some of the herbals in the supplements we take might be contribute to, contributing to liver toxicity. And the substance that they provide can be found in food. So um, instead of bilberry, we can eat blueberries to get the same type of pigment. Instead of eating wolfberry uh, supplements, we can eat uh, red peppers that contain zeaxanthin, the, the ingredient uh, in wolfberry thought to improve vision. And instead of taking astaxanthin supplements, we can eat salmon, where it's naturally present. So what is a healthy diet? Well, in our studies, we scored people on two diet patterns. One is adherence to the U.S. diet guidelines, which you can get more information about in, this, in the uh, pamphlet or online. I've given a link. We've also studied Mediterranean diets. Now, what these two have in common are they are plant food rich. That is, whoops, that is uh, that the foundation of these diets are whole grains, whole fruits, and whole vegetables. They're also sources of uh, varied sources of proteins and very little sugar and refined flours, uh, which are nutritionally weak. And physical activity is part of a good diet, too. People who had these had between two and uh, had diets that scored high on these had between two and three uh, lower fold odds for having AMD than people who uh, weren't on these diets. And we'll, this afternoon, I'll talk about another similar dietary pattern. So what might a day that fosters good eye health look like? Well, it would be bright and colorful like this. The majority of foods in your day would be coming from plants. Um, and there would also be a variety of uh, foods. For example, in the morning, I often eat an egg. I did this morning, I ate an egg, which has a bioavailable source of lutein. I often put the egg on leafy greens, as I did this morning. So you get a, a, a nice dose of uh, lutein, both on the egg and the, and the greens. And I've got a recipe in one of the handouts for an avocado benedict. Avocados are fat. Again, help lutein get absorbed. Also has some lutein in it itself. For lunch, you might have a big salad with colorful fruits and vegetables with antioxidants and anti-inflammatories, but a little bit of avocado or nuts or oil to help absorb that lutein. For snacks, you can eat high zeaxanthin supplements. I'm, I'm sorry. I got to... For, for snacks, you can eat um, things like red peppers, which have a lot of uh, zeaxanthin. Uh, for dinner, you can have plates that are three quarters plant foods, um, fish twice a week. And for dessert, consider berries, which are high in antioxidants and anti-inflammatories, and yogurt, uh, which instead of ice cream provides um, healthy bacteria for your gut, um, as well as uh, vitamin D. Now, many of you um, eat like this, some of you don't. If you'd like to eat more like this, start simply, making one change, focusing on foods that you most like. And it may be that soon you are eating a diet that is more tasty than you ever imagined uh, and makes you feel really good too. So in summary, the bottom line is to preserve eye health, whether you have macular degeneration now or don't. Enjoy real food, all types, mostly plants. Move and enjoy the outdoors. Start with simple, simple changes. We talked about supplements that might help. 
and many are concerned about passing on genetic risk for AMD, but we could teach our children and our grandchildren to have life healthy lifestyles, which might lower their risk even more than the genes. Thank you.